Welcome to another episode of Entrepreneurs on Fuego. We are interviewing Mr. Brandt, Daryl Brandt, with Public Image. Good to have you. How are you doing? Thanks Good to have you. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> You're having me, I'm right? having you. Right. That's cool. You do some cool stuff. Tell us. Just let's get right into it. Okay. We've just opened two and a half months ago a salon and barbershop combination in downtown Phoenix in the Roosevelt Row Arts District. Uh, we were excited that it became one of the top 15 great places in the country with the Urban Planning and Development Board of America. We wanted to be a part of the community and the best way to do that if it's an arts district is to put art up everywhere. So we've got Tara Sharp from Artel and she's curating our shows. We rotate about every four to six weeks and we're supporting local artists. Right now we have 21 different local artists on the wall as well as having our five barber stations, 10 hairstylists, massage, uh, mas massage therapists, nail techs, and I'm missing one, esthetician. Male and females? Across the board, everybody. So, Do you have La Locota? Uh, no, not right now. <laughs> what, what, what? I know. What? We're working our way. Wait We're working our way. Do you have uh, Tato Caraveo? Uh, Tato has not been there, but... What? Do you have Pablo Luna? Also what? Not. Do you have Carlos Benji Rivas? Sacoya? Dude, look around you. Service missed him. <laughs> Service missed him. He actually did the banners around our walls. Oh, that's cool, yeah. man. That's cool. No, we, you know, here at the Office Pod, we're all about art. Absolutely. And we're pretty much a collective ourselves, a community right. of entrepreneurs that come in here, rent the space by the day, by the week, by the month. Sure. And we are surrounded, literally surrounded by art, like you can see. Absolutely. Uh, it's a phenomenal headquarters. But all right, so you come up you come up with this idea of right. barbershop and mixing art and barbershop. My, my girlfriend's a hairdresser from Long Beach for 25 years. She's Long Beach, California. Hair. Yes. All right. And then I'm originally from Ohio. I was in New York and trained in New York City for uh, a session there. Became a master barber and went from New York to New Mexico, New Mexico to here. So I've been here for 10 years now. And we got together, started dating about a year and a half ago. And we said, wouldn't it be crazy if you and I... No. No. No, that's... <laughs> That it's couldn't possibly crazy. work. <laughs> right, right. Okay, but if we did, if right. we did, where would we put it? Well, downtown, of course. We're part of downtown. Well, in the arts district, of course. What would we want it to look like? Red, black, metal? Of course, yeah, all those things. So we just started working on napkins, and then we started looking at spaces, and at the time, everybody was all about, and still is, uh, repurposing old buildings. Yep. So we got beat out by <coughs> Velo Bike Shop, took the space that we looked at, but that was a little too big. Um, then we were looking, there was a sexually transmitted disease clinic on Portland and First, that, right by Bud's Glass Shack. That got taken and up. And I don't by, know how you wanted that, because you right. never know what could have remained. Right. Of course, I'm of course. just saying. But what, what appealed to us, there was <laughs> north-facing windows, and everything was like a little stall, like a doctor's office. There which, we go. For your barbers and estheticians and nail techs, it would be perfect, because you could have privacy in each room. So we kept going by Roosevelt Point, which is ultimately where we ended up. And our developer says, let's go take a look at this place. And we go into it, and we're like, this is a new building. It's huge. There's 635 tenants above us. There's no way we're going to be able to afford it. <laughs> what are you even showing this to us for? And it turns out that that used to be a field, and they'd filled up the apartment complex above, 100% occupied. Oh, but man. the space had been sitting empty for two years. So we were able to get in there and got a great price on it. They were doing tenant improvement money for us to help us put the plumbing in and the electricity that we needed. And it worked out beautifully. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Is the art of a good shave being ignored or lost by the younger generation? Or do you see that younger generation sitting back in a barber's chair getting a nice shave? There's nothing like a shave. Like a, like Correct. Like a, like yeah. a shave. I, I always like say, shave. Oh, I, I always say nothing, like nothing will make you feel more like a man with your clothes on than getting a shave. Fucking A, man. That's exactly We're there. what I'm talking about. Is that being lost? Uh, to an extent, I think it is. Right now, you've got the hipster community growing the beards out and doing that, and they're, they're looking at beard oils, beard pomades, yeah, and all yeah. sort of products that they can use on it. Um, but as we look at the, uh, the bigger picture with the fashion runways of what's happening in the spring and the next fall collection, one of the brands we carry, uh, Unite, actually sends their people over to Milan and London and New York. So the models now, coming up for next fall already, are all clean shaven again. Really? Of course. So everything it just goes in cycles. Everything's cyclical. Yeah. And so the next thing you know, people, instead of buying their beard oils and things, they're going to be buying their shaving creams and their shaving oils and still have that sense of going through a ritual. You get up in the morning and you have this ritual that you're going to go through, and it's just going to change a little bit. I can see the idea of combining 
uh, sports and a barber shop. Right. I can see the idea of combining a coffee shop with a barber shop. Combining art with a barber shop. How does that work? Okay, one of the things, um, I'm not from Arizona, so my first teams, everyone would assume, aren't the local teams. And they've become the local teams over the past nine years. I'm loving the Coyotes out in Glendale. I'm loving the, the Cardinals and everybody else. But um, what I've noticed is people come in and get a haircut and they say, you know what, I love the Cardinals as long as they're not playing my Giants, Jets, 49ers. I moved yeah, here because everybody Diego. else is yeah, everybody. Yeah. Yeah, right. Right. So they, right. they like them, but with reservations and there's an asterisk <laughs> on the end. So I do have a rule at the shop with the barbers is that we're not wearing any other team's colors. And, I'm, and as I hire people, they're like, ha that's funny. And I'm like, no, I'm serious. <laughs> if, the, if the Cardinals are playing, this, this weekend is the playoffs we're looking at. I know it's kind sure, of dated. Sure. But the Packers coming in, I, if a guy came in with a Packer jersey to work in my shop, he would go home. I, we're downtown. You can't disrespect the city. I there don't believe go. in that. No, that, so I, that's that I appreciate that. That's respectful. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. that's cool. And the art, why the art? People, you want people to appreciate the local... Um, uh, uh, artists, uh, yeah, the community, to get a sense of community, what? I had, I had a small one-chair barber shop out at Westgate, and out there we had, the, the shop was also red and metal and everything, and I had pennants up for the Cardinals and flags flew on game day. But downtown, uh, we're in the arts district. How can you disrespect, again, disrespecting the community? Um, everyone's talking about, oh, there, there's going through this change in the arts district, and that's true. You can definitely see that there's apartments going in, condos going in. People are worried about, oh, well, what are the artists going to do? Where are they going to be able to show their stuff? They're being We've sports, got yeah. 85 feet of glass, 9 feet tall from our windows. We have more art on display as you're walking down the street than any other gallery in town because you can see everything on their wall. Like if this piece were in our shop, you'd be able to see it as you're driving by night and day. We've got lights on in the shop. So to be in the arts community and not put it on your wall, plus it's like, who wants to look at a gray wall all day? I have always said that art is the emulsifier of a community. And this was what brings us together because Absolutely. we can talk about it. How beautiful this is, we can appreciate it. Absolutely. And, go ahead. And it, it, that could still hold true in a place like Surprise or Ahwatukee. Anywhere. But the reality is that the artists are downtown. And how can you not say, you know what, I love your stuff, I want it up on the walls. Do you sell their art as well? Yeah, their art. So, all yeah, the arts for sale. Everything's available for sale. And uh, Tara Sharp, who's the curator that's done Artel at the Clarendon Hotel, I thought, I know a few artists in town, and I've been getting to know more and more, but she knows everybody, on their, everyone's on speed dial with her. So it's like, okay, the first show, she said, who do you love? And I said, Scott Wolf was one of the first people that I saw. It's whimsical, it's comedy. He's um, just been picked up by the same person that Banksy uses in New York, so his, sh his stuff is about to go international. Um, and I, I just liked it. I saw it at, at an event and was like, wow, that's cool stuff. And so then the next time around, it was New Year's uh, Day, is, yeah, January 1st was the first, 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 first Friday of the year. Yeah. And we said, let's get as many people involved in this as possible. So we did that. And that, that, that's so cool. What, what inspired you to become a barber? Uh, my mom was actually in the hair business. She was working in a chain back in the Midwest, so I was always around it, and I thought, I hate the smell of perm solution. <laughs> so I go to college, I'm a big music fan, <laughs> I work in radio, I'm writing <laughs> record reviews and things, and one of my buddies goes, dude, he had just finished the barber program, and I was just working radio and also yeah. had a side job doing club promotions for live music. And he goes, we should take all your autographs and put it into a barber shop and make like Floyd's Barber Shop meets the Hard Rock Cafe. And I was like, great idea. Great so idea. I get into barber school, I get going. My mom's like, how's it going? It's like, great, I don't have to smell perm solution all that much. Um, and so then he moved to Chicago. From, I was in Dayton, Ohio at the time. And it's like, oh great, my partner that I was gonna open this shop with is gone, what am I gonna do? Uh, and moved to New York and started putting a business plan together. And it was like, okay, we've got a business plan, we've got a model ready to go and let's open it. So I had a, a barber shop over in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and I had one out at Westgate when we moved over here, and it was like, okay, now this is amazing. And I've fallen in love with the industry. I've been doing it since 99, trained in New York City. I was an educator for one of the biggest uh, men's grooming lines in the country, 
and I got tired, and this is odd, but I got tired of seeing their stuff in every CVS, Walgreens. It was like, oh, we're a professional line, you can only get it in the salons and barber shops, and then you start seeing it sweeping into, uh, next to Pert and all the, the brands that you there, see in the grocery store. There, there is a big difference. You call yourself a barber. Absolutely. You're, you're not a hair cutter, you're not a stylist. I'm, I am not a stylist, you're correct. A barber. Right. 1600 hours of school and there, there is a difference between a barber and a stylist and what's amazing is you walk into our shop and the first 12 feet of it is the vintage barber chairs design um, um, Wallace Lee Barlow who's an educator for Andis the clipper company has made these limited edition chairs we got five of them and you feel like you're in a barber shop you can walk back another 10 feet and the stylists are back there and so one of the brands that we carry is amazed they've come in their national brand director and said you know this is the future of what it's going to be people always say oh we've got a few barbers working here with a few stylists and they're kind of intertwined yeah, and you right. can't tell who's who yep. but we've got different furniture different there's just a totally different vibe between the barbers and the stylists and the brand wants to use us as their prototype for their international marketing because it's not like a hodgepodge we actually thought about it when we designed it and it all went together beautifully i think you heard it here kids Get a shave. Absolutely. Just get a barber shave. It's the best thing in the world, man. I, I find it hard to beat. Hard to beat. Definitely. Any other services that you do at the barber shop? Nails? Uh, yes, we have it all. So yep. as, as a barber shop, we do uh, shaves and haircuts, and then our stylists do hair color on women and men. Uh, we have nail techs that are in there, estheticians. So if you want facial waxing, we do that. We've got a massage therapist in. It's almost like a day spa. We I'm didn't, there, we didn't want there. to design it as elegant and sophisticated. We jokingly tell everybody as we hire them, I promise you'll never see a chandelier in our <laughs> shop. It fits into downtown. I've got a New York barber that is working with me and he's like this feels like I'm in midtown Manhattan it's wide open it's like loft they're open space on the ceiling you didn't put a drop ceiling in I'm like what's the use of that if it if, gives us more room to put art on the wall if someone could just open a steakhouse right next to it I'd weigh like 400 pounds but <laughs> we do have Pause, Pause Cantina is right next door. It's right next door. They tore it down and they're building the apartment complex there, but I know for a fact Michael signed the lease. They're putting Pause back in the first floor of that apartment complex. And in the meantime, you can go behind the Worth House, which they saved that uh, to the east of us. Uh, on the other side of the Worth House, he has a food truck. So we get our pork belly tacos. Uh, I'm sold. I'm, I'm there sold. you go. I, I'm there. I'm there for my shave, my man. Absolutely. Um, give us your website. Uh, it's ilovepublicimage.com. And if we're on Facebook, Facebook backslash I love public image. Public com. image. Great name. As a music fan, my previous shop was Snip Barbershop, and I took the logo for Spin Magazine and flipped the letters around. For public image, of course, the Sex Pistols, when Johnny Lydon Absolutely. left, had Public Image sure. Limited. Sure. So we thought we want a name that doesn't say barbershop, salon, hair studio, hair gallery. We wanted something strong that could stand by itself and represent all the different facets of of the industry, the and, public image is it. And if you don't know who the Sex Pistols are, Google them. Yeah, absolutely. You're too young. Right. <laughs> Great, man. With that, we're out.